How much do you try and get ahead of adjustments rather than just kind of reacting? Do you try and get ahead of adjustments at all about what you anticipate? A little them bit, a little bit, but I, I would say in general, the team that wins the game is going to make fewer adjustments than the team that lost the last one. Um, but you do try to anticipate what um, what each team is going to do, kind of you know go through some possible scenarios. It's you know when you have big coaching staff uh, like both teams do, you kind of sit around a table and hash everything out and then try to come up with the best plan. You guys have been significantly better at home in the playoffs than on the road since you've been here. Is there anything to that beyond the obvious? Beyond no. The it's the history of the NBA. Everybody's better at home than on the road. How much are you wrestling with the fact that David West has been so stable for you guys in that role all year, but you know, he doesn't, this series just seems to be a tough match for him. I know you won't be playing in the first half. Right? Yeah, it's just, it's, this is the modern NBA. You know, you, um, it's one of the things you have to account for almost every game. Uh, but obviously the playoffs, uh, there's more of a spotlight and certain teams uh, do certain things well. But, you know, Houston epitomizes the modern NBA. You know, three-point shooting all over the floor and, you know, pick and roll. So a guy like David, um, we have to pick his spots and try to help him uh, be comfortable, I think. He was late a couple times getting tougher on the three. He had to do the same thing against New Orleans. You know, it's not uh, it's not easy for a big guy to get out to a three point shooter because he hasn't really done it his whole life. You know, and for guards, you understand all the rotations really easily, and you kind of you know you you do it all the time. But for a big guy, it's a little tougher. Transition defense, finding a man, uh, staying home with a shooter, all those things. Uh, so there's some details in there that uh, we've gone over and had to account for. Just what do you uh, oh, about getting the kind of looks that they had in the first game to uh, play? play. we got to play with more force and more pace. Um, they had us on our heels the whole game, too. we got to flip that. we got to put them on their heels. And um, if we get stops, then Clay's going to get more open shots. And, that's, in general, when we're at our best is when we're getting stops and running out in transition and getting clay openings in uh, in transition from the three-point line. And um, It's amazing, though, how much the game opens up for everybody when you play really hard and really solidly. And I think you saw that in game two for their team. What do you think is the best way to get Steph more easy looks from the three-point range? Uh, play defense, again. Um, if we defend, get stops, then we get out and transition. Uh, those are the easiest threes that anybody gets, transition threes. You can get a couple offensive rebounds, kick them out. You know, that opens up shooters as well. But um, there's, you know, there's no, like, magic play that we're going to come up with. Or, you know, we're not, uh, we're not changing a whole lot um, in terms of what we do. We might add, you know, something here or there. But... Uh, just got to play better. You just mentioned playing with force a little while ago, and Mike D'Antoni was using that same phrase yeah. a lot for game two. What does that look like to you on the court when you guys are playing with force? Um, it means being locked in defensively, making the right rotations, keeping guys from their tendencies, uh, whether it's a strong hand or, or uh, you know, you saw a play second in the second quarter, I think, where Ariza caught the ball and just dribbled right to the through the lane, you know, the Red Sea parted, and uh, that's not force. So the opposite of that play <laughs> is where everybody rotates exactly to their man and the shot clock winds down. Maybe they even get a shot clock violation like they did game one. That's playing with force. Did you show them that play multiple times? Just once. That's all it took. Phil Jackson. Raymond sort of set the tone when he's flying and going for loose balls and just doing his thing in terms of coming out and yeah, Draymond always sets a tone for us, but I thought what happened in game two is we had so many breakdowns that uh, we had to help too much. Uh, so we got to do a better job guarding the ball and staying in front. And, uh, you know, like we did in game one, we did a better job of it. And that eliminates a lot of those corner threes and, um, you know, easy drive and kicks. And um, that was the biggest difference to me, game one and game two. Too many breakdowns on the ball, which led to other guys getting more involved. Phil Jackson's teams were always exceptional in the third quarter. You guys are exceptional in the third quarter. 
it doesn't seem like there would be a, a magic formula for that. What are the keys? How do you build a great third quarter team? I think the key, honestly, is, is having great talent. I mean, and I know I don't mean that to be um, flip. I think, I mean, I'm just saying when you have really talented guys, a lot of times they get a feel for the game in the first two quarters. Uh, maybe they get a feel for what the other team's doing and then uh, they lock in and, and locate something. And, you know, we always, like every team, we try to make a couple of adjustments at halftime and figure out where teams are attacking us. But the reason we're a great three point or three third quarter team is because we got a bunch of guys who are really good players who are smart. How much of a challenge is it to prepare for someone like Aaron Gordon, who's a, a, a real scorer off the bench when you started your rotations and don't have your normal guys? Is that tricky to prepare for? Uh, no, no. I mean, this is uh, this is what we do. You know, we there's a lot of guys around the league who. Can shoot threes and put it on the floor and make a play and that's modern NBA. I keep saying that phrase, but it's the truth. And uh, Gordon was great the other night, um, so we got to do a better job against him. Our offense, yeah. And again, uh, when you're taking the ball out of the net, you're going to end up with more ISOs. Um, so we've got to get downhill a little bit more. We got to get more space, and uh, I'm very confident we'll do that. Steve, in addition to the way you're talking about the playing with boards when it comes to clay, Mike was talking about how in kind of the pick your poison department that they're going to have to kind of have to live with Kevin getting the shots because he's yeah. obviously Kevin, but the emphasis was not to allow clay to get over the cup. What did you notice how they did that? Compared? They just play. They played way better. They scored more, which meant they got their defense set up more, and they were angry because they lost game one. And we were really comfortable because we won game one, and they kicked our ass. <laughs> Simple not, enough. Yeah, for sure. Not especially long, Houston. They're really good at getting people off the line and, and contesting, and the defense is really good. So what is it that they do well? Well, I, I think they, they are... Uh, they're, you know, they, they, they do a ton of switching like we do. And they've got a lot of guys who... You know, they may not be the Greek freak or KD, but they're, you know, good size. You know, good size guys with uh, Ariza, Tucker, Gordon. I mean, these guys are, you know, they're, they're good, good uh, solid defenders, and they've eliminated, um, you know, a lot of holes in their defense from the past few years by adding more defenders, PJ and Bamute. And, and so they've made it tougher in the half court for sure, and they've done a really good job with their defense. And the stats show it. I think they went from middle of the pack to I think they're top ten. So you no, know, it's a good defense. Um, but you know, I don't know how many ways I can say it, but you get to this uh, level of competition, final four teams in the league, best four teams. Um, you got to be locked in. You got to compete. You got to play every possession. Uh, we did a much better job of that in game one than we did in game two. And Mike would probably tell you the same thing in reverse. And it'll be a pretty good chance both teams are going to come out fighting tomorrow and we'll see a great game. And um, we're pretty confident that we're going to play a lot better. Was game two the worst playoff performance for the Warriors this year? No, no. I thought we did some good things. Uh, you know, we played very poorly in New Orleans in game three. Uh, very poorly against San Antonio game four. I thought those two games were, were really poor ones. I thought we did some good things in uh, game two, but uh, not enough. You spoke yesterday about the balance, kind of walk the line between chaos and discipline. Does that change at home for you guys at all? Is it uh, there, there seems to be um, a little more chaos at home in a good way. You know, we get more speed, more pace, our crowd gets into it. Uh, I, would, I would guess more of our Big, huge runs this year came at home than did on the road. Uh, I'm guessing on that front, but playing at home helps everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Steve.